Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be going over Olive, the professional open source editor. And Olive is a great free alternative, it's also open source, to any of the professional editing programs. <clears throat> programs such as Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. So in order to get Olive, Olive is also great if you are a beginner in editing. And it's great for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't have a lot of crazy tools. Um, one, it has a very easy learning curve. Once you grasp the basics of editing in Olive, you can quickly you can quickly become better at editing. And because of that, it's perfect for people who are just starting out. The second, of course, is the price. If you're just starting out in editing, then you don't want to pay a bunch of money for a program that you don't know if you're going to like or not. Third is Olive runs on every single operating system. It runs on Windows, it runs on Mac, it runs on Linux. So if you're thinking about editing, or maybe you're just somebody who wants to edit a video for grandma's 80th birthday party and you just want a slideshow of pictures with some music behind them. And if that's the case, then go ahead and download Olive. So to download Olive, let's go ahead and come down here to the download. And then of course, choose your version that you wish. I'm a Windows user and download it. Once you've downloaded and installed Olive, go ahead and open it up. And when you open it up, you'll see this little welcome to Olive message. And of course, it says that the software is currently in the alpha stages. Because it's open source and it's free, the people working on it have other jobs too. And so they are only able to work on it a little bit. If you have feature requests or anything, of course, you can come here to oliveeditor.org. But an alpha means that features are still being added. A beta means when, when programs are in beta, that means that the, all the features have been added and they're just fixing bugs before the final release. So now let's go ahead and just click OK. So let's go ahead and just grab all of these videos and then drag them into Olive. So I'm also going to drag and drop my video, my audio here into my project folder. So now that we have both video and audio, I'm going to come down here to the, come over here to the new, the little plus icon and add in a folder. And that folder I'm going to call video and add in one more folder and call it audio. This just helps to keep things organized. Then I'll go ahead and drag all of my videos into the video folder and my audio into the audio folder. So real quick, let's just run through the interface. Here you have your project window. Then you have two tabs on this window. One is the media viewer and one is the effects. Then you have the sequence viewer here on the right and you have the timeline down below. On the left hand side of the timeline, you have all of your different tools. And on the right hand side will be your EQ to see how your audio is, is doing. We have a lot of different videos here and a lot of them are at different frame rates. So I have this video, which is at 30 FPS, another one, which is at 60. I have one here that's at 120. And then these ones here that are at 30. And this is really important if you want to do slow motion videos. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the slow mo video. It's at 120 FPS. And I'm going to right click on it and then come down to properties. And in the properties, I'm going to go ahead and select the confirm to frame rate or con conform to frame rate and just type in 30. Actually, I'm going to type in 29.976. And the reason I'm doing that is 29.97 is the lowest frame rate that I have. So it's always best to adhere to whatever the the lowest frame rate is. And then I click OK. And I'm going to do that real quick for all of these other videos. So let's go ahead and just grab this DSC under uh, underscore DSC 0001.move. Let's double click on it. And I don't know if you saw the change, but here in the media viewer, all of a sudden the media viewer has the name of the clip that we've that we have selected. So let me click on that and you can see I can scrub through by grabbing the, the little playhead here. I can scrub through the the video. Now you'll notice that down here at the bottom I've got a little scroll wheel. Uh, if I put my mouse on one side or the other I can actually drag that and zoom out along the timeline so that I see the entirety of the timeline here. Or I can zoom in like this and then I only see a little area. I can hit the the play button here to play the video. All right, I can hit the frame forward button to go one frame forward. And then of course I can skip to the end or skip to the beginning. These two buttons reference whether you just pull video onto your timeline or audio onto your timeline. If I grab here in the video area and I pull this down, you can see I have both video on the top and audio on the bottom. But I'm gonna hit Control Z. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a timeline. So I'm gonna right click in my project and come down to new and 
sequence. Now let's go ahead and keep the width and height at 1980 or 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate at 29.97. That's what we want. And then I'm going to call this go underscore edit. You can name it whatever you want, but that's just what I'm going to name it. Now let's go ahead and add in our audio. So I can see here on the waveforms that the audio kind of crescendos here, but it also starts off with nothing for maybe the first couple seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag my playhead over here, and then I'm going to select the razor tool, or I can hit C on my keyboard, and I'm going to cut right there and I'm gonna cut that audio out. Next, I'm going to select my selection tool or V on my keyboard and select that piece that I don't want and just hit delete. I'll put my playhead back to the beginning, right click in between the playhead, which is this red line and this audio here, and then come down to ripple delete empty space. And that will make sure that my audio begins right when my video begins. If I want to hear it, I can just hit play. And you can see right here, I've turned the, in my recording, I've turned the audio off. So you won't be able to hear the sound. So you can see here that this is the audio playing both right and left channels. Go ahead and edit our videos. So let's go ahead and drop this video down and come back here to this DSC underscore one. And I want to go ahead and find a shot that I like. I'm going to scroll through here and I like that right there. So I've gone to where I feel like the shot should end. And I'm going to, with my mouse in the media viewer window, hit the O key. Then I'm going to drag my playhead back until I feel like I should start. And I'm going to start right when the move of the pullback of the camera begins. And I'm going to hit the I key. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drag this video down onto my timeline. The top of the timeline is always video, the bottom of the timeline is always audio. But you can see I've actually dragged down the audio as well. So I'm going to right click and come here to link slash unlink. And when I do that you can see the underline this video file that was under the name disappears. Then I can select the audio and hit delete. Now let's hit play and see what we have. Okay, I think that that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and add in another video. Maybe this video here. Okay, that's not anything. And I'm just kind of scrubbing through to see what the video is. So one thing you'll notice is that this is upside down, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start the video here by hitting I for in, and then I'm going to move until I feel like I want the shot to end. And then instead of grabbing everything and dragging it down, I'm just gonna grab the video here and drag this down. And then you can see a couple of things. This video, I intentionally took it to be a smaller size than the, the biggest size. So this video is actually 1920 by 1080. So if I come here to the, the media viewer here, if I come over to the effects, I can actually scale this up to fit perfectly by putting in 150 and then if I want this to be right side up, I just take the rotation and type in 180. And now my video is right side up. So I feel like two things need to happen. And this is just my opinion. First, as you can see here, my finger actually comes into the shot. Pull this back until my finger is outside of the shot. And then I can grab the edge of my clip here and just drag it back to my playhead. The second is that the jump from this shot to this shot feels very abrupt. So let's go ahead and create a fade from one of our videos to the other. In order to do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and move my second video on top of the first video. And then here where it says opacity, I'm going to click this little clock and that's going to be a keyframe. And that means that that Olive will automatically compute what the value is here as long as there's two keyframes and they have differing values. And then I'm going to drag this back a little ways, maybe about here, and then I'm going to change the opacity to zero. You can see we have a nice fade that goes from one video to the other. Now there is the cross dissolve tool right here, which is supposed to do the same thing but I find that to be a little bit buggy for me. Okay, let's go ahead and add in some more video. So I'm gonna choose this video right here, and I've gone a little ways in. You can see 13 seconds in, and I'm gonna hit the I key, and then go like that to about there, and then we'll drag the video down. Now you can see that this video is very small, and it's a different aspect ratio. So this is something that you see a lot of times on news sites or things like that where people use vertical video, uh, we're gonna kind of recreate that effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control C, and then I'm gonna move my playhead and hit Control V. 
because wherever my playhead is, Olive will copy, will paste that video. So if my playhead was here and I hit Control V, you can see that the two play, my original clip gets cut off. And then I'm gonna put one on top of the other. So now I have two of the same video. Next, I'm gonna come down here and click on the bottom video and I'm going to go ahead and increase its size. You can see how I increased the size by grabbing one of the corners. And I'm gonna increase that size until, until my video fills the entire shot. Next, I'm gonna select, select the top video and increase that size just until, just until the vertical axis fills the shot. So you can see if I didn't have this video here, then that would be black. Then with my bottom clip selected, I'll come here to the effects panel. And right here at the top, it says add video effects, or add video transition. I'm gonna add a video effect and come to the blur and add a Gaussian blur. And you can see our back video has now been blurred. I'm gonna increase that to a value of 10. And that gives a nice little way of filling in the space. All right, let's add one more shot. I'm gonna go ahead and come here because you can see that if I go further, I actually get out of focus. So let me go ahead and find where I'm in focus and hit the I button. And then let me zoom forward until I'm out of focus and hit the O button. Then I will bring that video down. And as you can see over here, we start out in focus and then zoom in out of focus. And what I want is that to be reversed. So I will right click and then go to the speed duration and click reverse and then OK. And now I go from being out of focus to in focus. The problem is this shot ends so abruptly. So one thing I can do to help keep this is right click and say save frame as image. And then I will go ahead and save the image as freeze frame underscore one and click save. Now I can bring that image. So now I can take the freeze frame and drag that here in front and my video will frame there because it holds that frame. So now let's go ahead and export this edit. It's not super great, but it's also not terrible. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the very end of the video and go back one frame by hitting the back arrow button. And then I'm gonna hit the O key. Now, just like up here with our in and out, here on our timeline, we have the in and out. And of course, if you just hit O, the in starts at zero, zero. Then let's go ahead and hit file and export. And here we go. We have the width and the height. We have the frame rate and we have the range. If we want our entire sequence, this would, if we change the range to entire sequence, then, then it would export everything, including where there is just audio and no video. So I'm gonna change that to in and out. And the frame rate is just what we set it at. And then the quality, the closer you are to zero, the higher the quality of the video is. You can see zero equals lossless, 17 and 18 is visually lossless, 51 is the lowest possible. So I'm gonna change that to 18 and then click export. That opens up this box where I can say go underscore video and then click save and you can see Olive begins to export. Okay, the video has been exported. So now if I go back to my folder where I saved it and this go video right here, let's go ahead and click on that. So there we go. I know that this has been kind of a mishmash of different things, but in general, that is all of. I know that this has been a mishmash of different editing techniques and different tools, but on the whole, that is all of. If this video has been helpful to you, I hope that you can like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.